So here we go. Um, let's see. So when an object moves in a circle, there's a couple of things that we can define about that circle. So um, I'm going to pretend like I can draw a really awesome circle right here. And we're going to look at an object as it goes from this point on the circle to, I don't know, some random point over here. Not, not a pretty angle. And uh, the thing about a circle we can define definitely is that it has radius. And that radius is the same. That was kind of the point of it being a circle. There's the center, R. Um, does anybody remember what we call the distance, like from here to here around the circle? That arc length. Uh huh. And um, S is the symbol I think you use in geometry for arc length. And um, does anybody remember what we call the uh, arc length that goes all the way around the circle? That's the circumference. So circumference, and how do you? All you turned into really good boys and girls and remember the formula for the circumference. What was it? 2 pi r. So great. Okay. What is 2 pi in terms of a circle? It's the, ang the radian angle for a whole um, circle. So isn't this theta? And theta times r gives us our arc length. And circumference is just a special case of the arc length. Now, if it takes time for you to cover this arc length distance, and here's our theta here, could I divide the arc length by the time it takes to make that or to cover that distance. It's completely legal to uh, divide by T on both sides. So now distance over time is also known as velocity or speed, but in this case we're going to call it our velocity. And then R times this omega over T business. I just swapped their, um, their order there. And omega over T is the, I mean theta, sorry, theta over T is called omega. That's where I was going with that. This is the angular speed. <coughs> uh-huh. Theta over t is angular speed. And the symbol for the angular speed is omega. And omega looks like this. Okay, that's usually it's delta theta over delta t. If you are um, writing on kindergarten paper, you would draw an omega like this. That is an omega. And I'm saying omega. I don't respond to you if you call it anything besides omega. So that means that our linear speed, or the speed around the path of a circle, would be r times omega. So this is called the linear speed or tangential speed. And um, tangent means tangent to the circle, linear is straight, a tangent line is straight, linear means straight. So you may read a question that refers to it as the tangential speed. You may read a question that refers to it as a linear speed. And it would be in meters per second. This R is the, the radius, just as you would expect it to be. And it would be measured in meters for uh, SI units. And omega is the angular speed. And it is measured in, what, what was 2 pi measured in? Radians. radians, so this has to be radians per second. Now a little trivia, radian is a made up unit so that you feel good about saying something, but it's really not a unit at all. And so you could actually write the unit for angular speed as 1 over second, or second to the negative 1. But a radian is a made-up thing. It doesn't even really, it's not really a unit. 
It's just so that um, it refers to how the angle is defined, but it's a ratio, and ratios have no units. And so, you yes, you can write radians per second, but if you ever read a question that, uh, like in the future, and um, you're taking some physics class somewhere else where I'm not there, and it says the angular speed is four seconds to the negative one. That's not incorrect. That is a correct way to write the um, angular speed. Um, I'm going to usually write radians per second because you like it better that way. And most questions on the AP exam are written that way too. Okay. As we go around and around the circle, um, we have a tangential speed. And let's look at that speed in two different places, two interesting places, right here and right here. And tangent means that our velocity would be tangent to the circle. Those two different places right there. And pretend like I'm a really awesome circle drawer and arrow drawer, and those arrows are exactly the same length. And here's the center of my circle, and this would be the radius of my circle. And those would be exactly the same length in both, both cases. And then um, let me draw drop like a perpendicular down here like this. And I'm going to call this right here theta. And this right here theta. And through the magic of geometry, if I were to make a line like this. Oh, pretend like that's going through that red dot. Oh, it almost does. Okay. The definition of a tangent line to a circle is that it is perpendicular to the radius. Think about that. So if here is a circle, and here is a tangent line to my circle, and here is the radius, a tangent line is perpendicular to the radius. Yes? Maybe? Alright, so if that's true and this is 90 degrees and this is a little right angle triangle right here, then this angle here is also theta, which makes this angle here also theta. <coughs> now the definition of acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. Now I have a velocity that is directed up and to the right at an angle theta. So I have an x component and a y component of my velocity. So let's look at the acceleration in the x direction. So this is my final velocity. This is my initial velocity. The x component would be v cosine theta, just like it always has been when we have a, an angle, a velocity at an angle. My initial is also V cosine theta. So what's the acceleration in the X direction? Zero. Okay. Let's look at the Y direction. I'm going to scooch up just a little bit there. Let's look at the Y direction. My final velocity would be negative V sine theta. My initial velocity so minus my initial velocity will be positive v sine theta. So final minus initial over delta t. I just looked at the direction that it was pointing. So I'm going to go back up here for just a second. And I'll show you. Hold on. Okay. So for my final velocity, it has a positive x component and a negative y component. So that's negative. And then for my initial velocity, it had a positive x component and a positive y component. So I was just looking at the direction there. Okay. <clears throat> so it looks like the acceleration in the y direction is not zero. Yay! So then our acceleration in the y direction would be negative 2 v sine theta over delta t. Now, 
as it goes around that circle, if it's moving at a constant speed, then I could say that V is equal to R omega, and omega is equal to theta over T, delta theta over delta T. I'll put a little delta in there. And in this case, our delta theta is 2 theta over delta T. I'm just doing a proof. This is not anything you ever have to do, but I don't like for you to think that equations fall out of the sky and onto your page. So delta T will equal R 2 theta over V. Is that good? So let's substitute this guy right here back in for delta T. So AY would equal negative 2V sine theta over R2 theta over V. Any questions so far? Now, if we look at this circle up here, and we imagine these angles getting very, very small. So mentally, let these um, thetas get really, 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 really small. Like 0 0.00001. Now, if you have a calculator, put it in radian mode and take the sine of 0 0.00001. The sign of a small number in radian mode, 0 0.00001. It's a really small number. Is it about equal to 0 0.0001? No, I did a lot more. Oh. Yeah. It's about the same thing. So the sign of theta approaches theta, and this is called the small angle approximation. Um, and you do that using the Taylor series. But this is not a math class, so we're not going to actually do the Taylor series on it. But you can, I'll leave that as an exercise for the student for you to do an expansion. All right, so if we, if we make this, if we use a small angle approximation here, we're going to get um, that our acceleration in the y direction would be negative. 2v theta over 2r theta, or r2 theta, it doesn't matter, r2d2, whatever. I'm just kidding. Um, over v, I feel like that's what I'm doing. So, get out your favorite lightsaber. Oh, here comes Obi-Wan. Vroom, 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 vroom. So then we're left with an acceleration of negative V squared over R. Now let's look at that negative sign. What does a negative sign mean for an acceleration? Direction, okay? And in this case, that direction would be straight down towards the center, okay? And that's only because of the direction that we chose for this problem, okay? So if we were to move the pie piece that we're looking at here, if we move it around there, we would get an acceleration towards the center. If we were to flip it all the way, we'd have an acceleration that would be positive. If we go over here, we have an acceleration to the right. In all those cases, which way is the acceleration pointing? Towards the center. So, in general, we can write that the centripetal acceleration, the center-seeking acceleration is V squared over R. And I just don't want you to think that that fell out of the sky and onto your paper. It is not negative. It's towards the center. That was the whole point of that discussion. All right. All right, centripetal so acceleration, which would be in meters per second squared. This is our linear velocity, also known as tangential velocity, depending on 
the author of the question that you may be reading. Um, speed or even velocity. And that would be in meters per second and R is the radius of the circle. Which is in meters. Okay. So now we can look at what force is causing that centripetal acceleration. So if there is a force, and we have to have a force in order to have an acceleration, then that force is center seeking. <clears throat> 